welcome back. In my first video I converted Egyptian aspective into a modern perspective and showed you models of some of the mythical tools held by Ptah, the Jed, the Crook, the Ankh and the Cartouche rope. I discussed the ram system described in the tomb of Unus. Now with all that information it's possible to build with some degree of accuracy a working model. Now let's start with the ram system. If your men are pulling on a machine that draws the stone up the side of the pyramid, the width of the ramp is drastically reduced. All you need to cater for is the width of the stone. When the pyramid is finished, you would obviously dismantle the ramp from, from the top down, and you'd use the ramp as an external slide. Now it would be great if you could somehow load the ramps down in one piece and reuse them. The problem is, you can't slide the stone back and leave it the block up. The block would be the same height of the pyramid course and unfortunately the courses on Khufu's pyramid vary from course to course. So speed would be the order of the day. You chop off the front and lever it down. So this is the front, the front of the step. You cut away the front, leave it up, not drop it down, leave it up and then slide it down the ramp. The Egyptians were fantastic at recycling. Perhaps the size of the complex of King Zosa's step pyramid at Saqqara is a reflection of the amount of times stone ramps were constructed and then brought down. Okay, this is, a, this is an example of one of the stones that's going to make the pyramid. It's a couple of Lego bricks. Um, the, two, the two red rockers on the bottom, let's assume that the, these are made of the rockers the same as what's on the cherubim. Place your stone at the bottom. Times. Switch that on. So when the stone got to this point on, on the ramp, it started binding against the wall, against this another wall, that's gonna, the other ramp that's going that way. So what you need is something to alleviate the friction that's going there, and that's what the flail was for, I think. With the, the, the ends like a hammer, like a, like a, um, a claw hammer, so you can keep, keep, keep these rollers against the wall, like a boat would on, on the, the side, side of a harbour. A boat would hit the side and you'd have boys on the side. That would fit on the side of the wall there. And they'd come up and the, the stone would hit it and they'd roll along. And it's tapered so when it, when it rolls, it rolls upwards. If it was just flat, it just, it just, it just stretched, the, stretched these strings. And on, on a flail you can see there's like bell shapes. Now that's if it gets wound up, wound up, wound up. It sinks into the bell, so, so the rope can shorten it and it won't, it won't snap the rope inside. One of the big advantages of having a, a, a single ramp, um, just purely for the stone and not for men to run, for, for men to haul the stone up the ramp, and the jet gave me a, a great amount of power. You can have a steeper ramp, like the stones cut off at Saqqara, I've measured them at 16 degrees. It's normally um, an, an average of 10 degrees people say people can pull, um, pull a stone up a ramp but if there's no people involved and you've got a machine you can, you, can, you can have a steeper ramp at 16 degrees there's no men on it so you can actually oil you, can, you can oil this ramp so you, it's, there's less friction and it'll slide up the ramp easier the problem with having an oiled ramp is if you get oil on this rope it'll slip round the jet but the solution to stop having getting oil on on the rope is this. It's a wasp sept. It's a gaff come pass me a rope machine or tool. Let me show you. On this side of the pyramid you've got you've got another jet, I don't know whether you can see it there. I'll just move the camera around. Got a jed on the corner, so put your, your machine there, wrap your rope around the jed a couple of times, 
and just make sure these guys are carrying the wash steps they keep the rope dry that's on, on that's going to be on this on this stone so you've got your they, they catch the ropes and pass it to so this end is for pick this end this end of the wash sept is for picking up picking up rope scooping it off the floor or for catching it with this one and the hook at the end is for passing passing the rope out <clears throat> so you've got your rope round your jed and you've got a ramp that side a ramp this side so all when your men pull on these ropes either side and you can haul a stone from that side and a stone from this side once there's tension in the rope the guys with the wash steps let the rope go or probably keep 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 it keep the wash underneath it so it doesn't touch the the ramp and then they'll haul two stones up at once now the pyramid was said to have been built with uh, left and right-handed teams or gangs of men so you've got your gang on the left and a gang on the right your crook your jed your wash sept your flail this guy here would have a flail so that's it that's it really for the hauling the stones up the side of the pyramid when it gets to the plateau it's a different story now if you remember in the temple of seti there was two photographs of the jed one one was getting dressed which is the one on the corner because that's susceptible to getting blown with sand because it's on the corner of the pyramid and the other one was being raised and that's this jed on, on the plateau um, this this uh, holds um, loads on a flat surface on on the plateau itself now it needs a huge weight on the top to hold it down um, this jed is, is hauling stones up, up from below so the actual um, act of hauling the stone from below forces the jed in, in, into the rotating socket to, uh, to be honest but the, the jed on the plateau is hauling things at 90 degrees to its shaft so this would need to be fixed into, into a, like a semi-permanent um, solid state so you'd have a huge huge beam on the top hold with the weight holding it down so it, it didn't have to be a um, smooth beam like this. It could be all like it could be all like it could it could be rough. So the, only the underneath needed to be to be smooth. And then you raise raise it, put it in its socket like that. Um, and then these two teams of men rotate the rotate the the jed through these two slits at the top. There's a slit in the middle for where the tow rope comes in and out, where you can haul the sled towards the jed. Um, now, as as the, as the loads coming up up this ramp here, um, the rope would be tied to the jed here, tacked round it round this turning post. So as you're pulling as you're pulling your load up, um, I have to use two hands here. Sorry, get that rope out of the way. That's brought onto this plateau. Then. It's un offloaded from these two, two semicircular ramps, or from these rockers. The rockers are taken off the bottom, and it's put on this flat sled, and hauled to any whatever position it's wanted on, on the plateau itself. And these two guys, their job now is, is to get rid, of, is to get these rockers, rockers, back downstairs ready for another one. Now, the, the ang, which is on, over here, and over here. Uh, with men attached to it you don't need an ank for if you're on the plateau because you can just hold all of them them bunch of knots together now the the there's a, a thing called a tet which was associated with the ank but its form follows function it was it was slightly different than the ank for a reason now this is a tet it's got a couple of leather straps on it. Now you tie your cartouche ropes to, to this. You would just carry this in your hand. And then the, the other rope is fixed to the inside of, of, of this. This is a bone. Now what, why they use bone is because it's got a compre com compressive strength. When it slams against the side of this uh, stone wall here, you don't want it to shatter. And it, it bone, bone would be the, the, the ideal substitute for wood. It's estimated the Great Pyramid is constructed using 2.5 million blocks, weighing an average of 2.5 tonnes each. 
Each was quarried and transported to the site over a 20 year period. This works out to approximately 34 blocks being laid every hour on a 10 hour working day. Now you have a jed on each corner of the pyramid, that would mean a machine would have to lift 8.5 blocks per hour. The jed draws two blocks at a time, therefore the machine's lifting process operates 4.25 times per hour. Now a ramp is approximately 100 metres long, that's the distance from the base of the ramp to the first stage. Now the experimental jed I used operated with the mechanical advantage of 2.4, therefore the pulling team would need to travel 241 metres per pull, plus the return journey or to rewind the jet, a total of 482 metres. The, the average speed would be 482 metres times 4.25 per hour, which is a total of 2,048.5 metres per hour or 1.27 miles per hour. I must stress this is an average, I assume when the workers are pulling on the ang they would be running at speed. Now the plateau jets there are 43 beams on top of the king's chamber. I assume these beams held 43 jeds in position, at least. These granite beams are placed on the plateau at the beginning of the construction, along with any other oversized blocks. Taking in into account the redundancy of nine, when the they would be ones be getting dismantled and raised in their course, leaving 34 in constant use. The reason the so-called stress relieving chamber exi existed is purely housekeeping. It's easier to leave them up there than to try and take them down. Now because the exterior of the pyramid has oil drams which are in constant use, the quickest way to get the men off the men and the sleds and the rockers to come back down is via the grand gallery and the ascending passage. Now the king's chamber, there's a machine in the king's chamber that operates um, a mechanism that lowers the men and the, the uh, the rockers down. I'll discuss that in my next video.